Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's a Squirrel Saturday, and do I have a deck for you? I know you've seen Precision Strike used at the World Masters. I know you've seen it used on Ladder. You've seen it with Shiru. You've seen it with Novogradian Justice. You've seen it in my own Carryover Perfected deck, but you've never seen it like this. We are using movement with Precision Strike for tempo value, for removal, um, for patient play, but more than anything, just to trick and trap your opponent into making plays that they will later regret. Uh, basically, we're packing in Smugglers. Uh, we are also rocking uh, Fove for some consistency here, but focusing on the Gezros play, Yurden for cleanup, uh, and then just some phenomenal uh, tempo value with Volunteers, Sentinels, and then the Cat Witcher and Dryad Matron, Dolbathana Sentry is just the best five provision card synergy uh, sex tuplet in the game. Cat Witcher is going to move back and forth dealing damage to the enemy units. And then when you get later on to Adrenaline 4, it's going to start doing two damage. Uh, I honestly think he is probably the best of all of the Witchers uh, that have been released in five provisions. Uh, he's just so easy to use. He's just set it and forget it. Um, Bear Witcher Adept at four provision is probably my favorite for the four provision ones. Uh, but anyway, there's that. So let's jump into a game and show you how this is going. Yurden is finding phenomenal value for me in ladder. Uh, I would highly, highly recommend him as an inclusion if you are blundering about looking for some value. Uh, Yurden is just an easy inclusion. Uh, it, is, it is just crippling to Nilfgaard, uh, devastating to Northern Realms, um, and it's really one of the few ways that you can get through to Erland. Erland is one of my favorites, but uh, Gezra is, is just so easy to use. You don't have to do anything. He just wrecks nerds, and you can play him early in a round too. He's still going to give you that random boost. And that random damage, uh, he's just obviously better later on. Alright, so here what we're looking for is as much hand boost as possible. So I am going to put Sentinel back just so I can have the flexibility. Since this is formation, I might need to do some removal early. Circle of Life is nice early on, but we do have Fove, and I'd rather get it out that way. Uh, I prefer actually to go on Blue Coin with this deck just so I can get out Dunka. But Red Coin works fine. We just have to be able to do our math. And remember that this is 5 points of removal plus 6 points of play for 11 points. And then uh, we also have here uh, 13 points with Mahakam Volunteers and No Gradient Justice. And you guys know that I love to play them for the thinning play more than I like to play them for the tempo necessarily. So I do recommend them used for that. Uh, this doesn't make a ton of sense to me. It just tells me that he bricked into one, essentially, right? So he still has another one of these in hand. Uh, Attorney Joust is fine here. There's no way for us really to have protected that all that well. Um, and I don't really want to get Dunka out quite yet. Um, here I'm actually just going to set up Cat Witcher. Now you want to put him to the row that is not going to be the row where you want the damage, right? Because you're going to move to that row, then do that damage. But here I can play Vrighid Dragoon and move off one of these units. Uh, probably this Brigade, just so I get guaranteed damage onto the range row when Cat Witcher moves back. Opponent's probably going to think he's a genius by playing to that same row. Yeah. So this way when he moves back he's going to do damage to, uh, to the top row. We're just being patient here. Uh, we'll get out our tempo soon enough. Probably next play. Don't bring any purifies in this deck. You could sub in. Uh, you could sub them in. I think maybe do one for this Fryhead Dragoon since there is a lot of movement otherwise. Uh, the bleed is a little bit weird to me. Uh, I genuinely thought that this was going to go to lock. Not 100% sure why the opponent did that. Um, yeah, 
I don't know. I don't. There are, sometimes there aren't words. So here I actually do want to get out these sentinels. And I'm going to show and then tell. Uh, we're just going to go for the death blow onto the hunter here. So I like the thinning. But also here I get to bring out Triumph Boar. And just start doing some damage value that way. And here we're able to get out some decent tutoring. Uh, getting these two sentinels out from our deck and we also here are able to take over in value this cat witcher loses one point but he gets a guaranteed point in value onto the northern onto the top row all right this is fine um so here because the opponent has taken our cat witcher we're just going to play around it a little bit He is going to do one damage, so the opponent here could pass if they wanted to. Potentially coming in for Dragoon, maybe? Oh, this is an Emissary. It's a little weird. Oh, we're going to slowly kill this off, but right now we're going to focus fire onto the Brothens, just since it's an Assimilate engine. We have the opponent right where we want them. This Fove can now play the 3 points of damage for 5 point play and give that carryover to Dolbeth on a Sentry, because Yurden is obviously uh, not a Scoia'tael card. So here we get five points of we get five points of value with Fove and two points of damage with Boar. So this one point take from Cat Witcher wouldn't be a problem, even if it were going to land, but it's not. So here we're just gonna remove it, play Fove, and we go for Circle of Life. And uh, I do otherwise like a long round, especially with the Yurden. So we're kind of just gonna be done here. Poisons would be problematic to me. Imperial Formation can be a poison deck. So depending on what draws I get, I may want to just really put on the pressure this next round and force it to be the long round. Um, I do like what I see. We haven't used our own Nero yet, obviously, for that justice. So we are going to probably go for that right now. Uh, I don't I think the lock here makes good sense I'm Just gonna set up hawker smuggler. We just need to stay enough ahead of the opponent. And we can put some pressure on him I'll Let hawker smuggler go for as long as possible. So here we'll go for it. cat witcher would probably be best to play this first since it was gonna get that value regardless Opponent here going for often just trying to get that value I think if I was a betting man, this is uh, potentially a ball deck. Usually when you see this kind of immediate resistance to a bleed, uh, the opponent is going for ball. So we'll see if we can either bleed that out this round or something else. But the opponent has played both hunters, so there's no more aristocrats in that vein. I want this hit onto the hunter. Yeah, I am losing one point of value, but I had a chance of doing that with often anyway. But Yurden into Nazca Sergeant actually looks pretty decent for me. Poison is fine, but it's really slow tempo. The opponent really needs to pick it up. This cat witch are now doing two points of value. Unfortunately, the hit onto often means that we are giving one point back. 
but it still represents a ten point, uh, eight points of removal. Or sorry, nine points of removal, one point in boost. Uh, that being the case, I'm actually going to play this sentry, and we're just going to go for the 2-0 here. Just pray that this goes to melee. Please put it on your melee row. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, this is exactly what we wanted. So, I mean, they do get good value here, but we're now erasing 8, 9, uh, 11, 20 points and giving one back. Plus, we put two on the board. It's exactly what we were looking for. And now our Cat Witch continues to tick, continuing to find value. Just totally decimating all the value out of our opponent's deck. And looking to get any of these combo of cards as pretty good options for us. Uh, this is going to get the opponent close, but not quite there. We still have to let it come back to us. They will be able to pass after they make this next play. <laughs> yeah, it's a perfect bleed from us. Uh, Masquerade Ball is where all the value in this deck was centered. And they take it by one point using Masquerade Ball as the final play. Uh, Shakar1000, as always, you guys on YouTube. I'm recording for YouTube, for those of you on Twitch. For those of you on YouTube, I'm on Twitch. Uh, I only have so much time in a day, so we gotta make it all work. Um, do I think Salamander is better with Renew or Sienna? Um, you don't have a way of guaranteeing the kill with Renew, right? So, and you need to use it twice in the same round. So probably with Sienna, technically, but how are you going to protect it? The Ozar's Beetles just really aren't that good right now. Uh, I'm going to put this back. She's just not all that much value to me right now. Just denying this value. We'll go for Gezrus next. Ezrus, welcome back. Good to see you again, my friend. Yeah, we went, uh, I think what you might have seen was round two where we played them. I guess we'll just go for him. It's not a big deal one way or the other. It's the same amount of value. Yeah, not quite enough from the opponent. So we had a... Hey, no, no, no. No problem, Ezra's. Always appreciate the commentary. I know people on YouTube really do appreciate when you guys ask me specifically why I made a decision that I made. Sometimes I just do things out of habit. <laughs> it's not always for the best reason. Um, so really helpful. Uh, look, I think... Uh, so we I played both centuries last round because the first century we played immediately got locked. Uh, but I do otherwise agree with you. I think Ezra's, those of you on YouTube, you can't see the chat, but made a great suggestion... You want to use your sentry sparingly. Um, Salamander deck looking very strong if you veil Sea Jackal and then spend all the money on him. Uh, look, I think that, that makes good sense. Um, green Mutagen for the veil, that makes perfect sense. I think the problem... With him, I, I just think uh, I just think we're gonna see 
unlimited Yurdens, and I can't in good faith recommend a Sea Jackal when, in my opinion, the best decks this season are going to be with Yurden. I mean, just Yurden is just so incredibly powerful and such an effective tech tool. Uh, it's hard for me to recommend something else. All right, we're looking for Duncan. We get her. Overwhelming Hunger is always a little bit stressful. I don't want to feed a Maruna play. Dunka is nice, though, because she only boosts uh, my own units. But, you know. Uh, we're going to go for the Cat Witcher here, just so we can clear one of these off. Catnip instead of crowns? Wow, that's an excellent voice line. Um... Apologize for my timer. My son was using iPhone and he's learned how to set timers. It's quite fun. Uh, this is a very poor play. There's no reason you needed to put this onto a different row. It would have been much better for that to go to a different row. Um, that being the case, I think we're just going to go ahead and get these started. We're just going to rotate rows and start wreaking havoc. Could have put them both on the same to clear off this necker, but I have guaranteed value here, so I'm just gonna let it go. Just continue to pad our wallets with lots of carryover value. Going to say you probably want to use that Karen right away. Um, let's go ahead and get a sentry out here. I just need more engine value. We're close to the four point threshold where these cat witchers are going to start doing two damage each. Uh, here, Quax is brutal here. We lose our Yurden. Quite rough. Oh, it's our Gezrus. Sorry, I take that back. Gezrus is. 12 Yurden is less, so I actually don't mind this at all. Uh, of course, he's only going to do one boost, um, but that works fine for me. Uh, we haven't used any of these nature cards yet. I think we're going to use Fove here just for value. We don't have any Treants, so we do miss a, a little bit of point play here. But this way we can use the Force Protector. And Gezra still moves, so this Bafana Sentry is still benefiting him. So we just have kind of too much value for the opponent to really push back against. I do not, I'm not running the locations quite yet. Uh, the whole reason for that, and we did a PSA on this yesterday. Thank you for bringing this up again, Ezra. Uh, use your keys to get the locations all for free. It's 100% what you want to do. All right, here I can just move stuff and get value. Uh, but I think, so I, since I don't see anything really doing that much, I'm actually gonna go ahead and move Gezrus back. He gets more value for the boost than he gets for the damage pretty soon here, so. It just, just crazy amount of value out of our engines. And I don't I, I played there because it's a four provision card, I don't mind tossing. And I do want to carry this round. Um we're missing the point value on the protector. So I'm just going to damage Matahori. I'm just playing for time at this point. I don't think it's going to be possible for the opponent to overcome us in terms of point value. Gezrus is going to boost by at least four points. I do like the Ahira Quax play, but you have to be able to resist the bleed. And I think the opponent is really going to struggle against the bleed here. Just looking at our hand, we just have an incredible amount of carryover value. Oh, yes. 
Yes, 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 yes. Um, okay, I don't really want to tweak with this because I really want to be able to get out the volunteers and the sentinels this round with the justice. That way I can get a really good chance of getting these three cards, like a perfect chance of getting these three cards in the next round. Um, that's This is exactly what I want. We're just going to go ahead and get down Hawker Smuggler here and just carry over value. But yeah, I, Ezra's having a great point here. You can use the location to get three Witchers going for you. It works quite well. Um, here the opponent using Overwhelming Hunger to get really good value there. Uh, Malena is going to be perfect here with Geralt Yurden. We're just going to be patient and act like we don't know what's going on. The Yurden's also going to set up for the leader charge. But hopefully they continue to use leader charges under these Ekimaras. So each of the trees, I'm going to show this Ezra, so thank you for bringing this up again. But each of the trees provides each of the locations for free. I mean, not for free. They are quite expensive. But Alright, uh, this isn't the worst play I've ever seen. Um... Just playing for time here a little bit. <clears throat> um... Yeah, I just really want to get this thinning. I don't have crazy ton of points on my side, and the opponent does have a lot of Vs stacked up. So here I'm pretty pleased with where we are. The opponent still needs to make up 12 points of value, and this Hawker Smuggler is still ticking for us. So he's able to use Oniromancy again to get out the V. Uh, saves him from the pinch situation, but he does need to use the last leader charge if he wants to preserve it for future play. This is one of the biggest Vs I've seen yet. Um, so I'd be happily surprised if the opponent's able to pull it out, but no more Oniromancy. Uh, we've seen a Hero Quax use, we've seen Alzer's Double Cross, we've seen Mata. I think the remaining plays. Oh, and Nogglefar. Uh, this isn't helpful for us. This is much better. And then Sentra being the last play we want to get from this anyway. Wow, the opponent was able to squeeze Haunt in here. We're just going to erase this. We don't want to mess with it. And it gives us a body for our Dryad Matrons to start working. Probably We should have played this to range row. That was a misplay. Excellent value out of this V. I also spent all of my keys on ore for kegs, only to have somebody point out to me on stream the exact same thing you're talking about, Ezra's. Uh, yeah, I mean, make sure to check those key trees for the locations. You do get them, as I said, nominally for free. Get the other matron, and then we'll put down the then we'll put down the sentry. Ah, uh, Hillock. Hillock's the other one. I knew there was one more. I was trying to remember what it was. Phenomenal value here. Um, yeah, we'll get her down. I actually should have put her on the right-hand side so that she got the boost first, but this works. If the opponent is able to pull this out, and drop down the V one more time, I'm going to be very, very impressed. This is the best V play I've seen. 
yet. Here we're able to get some good value, but it's just not enough to compete with this massive V. Ah, Villum. Nice. This is crazy good value. Doesn't really matter where we go with this. It's just not enough to compete with this V play. Pun was able to deftly play around uh, Heat Wave, too. Always protecting the V from heat, heat Wave. Mad value. The trees? You want to see a Nature's Gift deck, Deb Ezra's? I'm going to do one more game for this YouTube video. And then we can do some other chill stuff. If my son's not up from his nap yet. Oh, 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 oh. Sorry, yeah, yeah, sorry. One more. Let me... I, I got you. The key trees. Thank you for reminding me. So yeah, just do it by rope. So if you come onto... So first off, you need to go the way of the Witcher. You need to work your way back to each of these titles. Each of the titles will unlock each of the six corresponding trees. And then it's usually five or six nodes away. You can get each of the each of the locations. I wish they were premium. Uh, they're not premium, but they are all available here in the trees. So I did unlock Karen Saren. So I think my the two best ones in my opinion are Care Saren and uh, and the bear which are the uh, Heron Kaduk. Both of these so this one heals adjacent units by three. So if you play Bear Witcher onto each side, you're getting six points of value. I'll post the post it you're on the you're on the Discord. Post it like DM me and then I'll post the link up here. Sorry. I, I can't always be watching chat when I'm doing games, so I have Nightbot configured to block links unless it's Play Gwent. Shield Wall should be fun. Probably has a little bit more removal than some of the other decks we've been playing with. Oh. Onsace is threatening for this Dunka, but I really do like her as initial play. Uh, we could play Hawker Smuggler first and then the Dunka. But actually, Hawker Smuggler boosts Yurden, so he's actually a little bit better. Uh, we get Justice. I, I honestly don't really want to tweak with what we have here. It's too much stuff we can break into. There it is. Ever predictably. Now, why is the Discord not coming up? It should that command should work for you. I'm not sure. Uh, yeah. I mean, nothing if not predictable. Son is hilarious. Uh, so he does have to come down to melee, which is. Uh, and the opponent opts for another shield here. This seems like a bit of an overcommitment to me. Especially when we can just do that. Uh, I think I will go for boar here. We'll go for uh, we'll go for Fove first. Let's see what he places. Uh, 
Uh, then we'll set up this Cat Witcher just so we can start pinging off these shields. Don't want to fall right into a Ragnar play. Ragnar has been playing for decent value. And I'd like to push him off into a into another round. I, I'm not going to ping to kill on Sace because he'll only do 4 damage unless he can boost him. And I'm just going to hazard a guess that he doesn't have much to in the way of boosting. And he only has one more shield. So even if he did boost it and spent the shield, I'd give up this round with my carryover value that I've gotten from my Hawker Smuggler and Dunka. I'd trade that any day. Especially since the Varaxis would have to come down and wait a turn anyway. Great question, though. It's not whenever it moves, right? Yeah, that's a little annoying. Catnip instead of crowns? Also because this just plays well for me. Let's move this back. I don't want to ping that student. There we go. Movement leader does work really well. Uh, thanks for bringing that up. So I'm not using the movement leader because I do not want the opponent to know how committed I am to movement. Uh, that tends to change their game plan. I also really love the consistency I get from using leader. He's moving back to ranged. So we're just going to move up this Griffin Witcher. That way we can pop another shield. Although we are down to Adrenaline 4, so I might have wanted to leave that there. You got a Triumph Boar now. This, it is true, Ezra. This is more non-interactive. I do have a movement deck. I'll probably be recording and do as a supplement uh, for seasonal. Movement in seasonal is just broken good. Just phenomenal, phenomenal value. Um, I don't hate Beringer here. We're going to go ahead and take out this Griffin Witcher Adept. How about we will go for Triumph 4. Just avoiding a couple things here. Number one, losing on evens. So here we get the perfect setup that we want. Beringer is now ready to be stranded all on his own. And we get the play we like. So we now guarantee a longer third round, which is good for us. And we also uh, did some phenomenal thinning here, so... That is that is true. Yeah, Beringer is is not for seasonal because the cat witchers will move and Beringer will kill himself. Don't use Scoyatel with <laughs> with Beringer. Oh, that's a great that's a great PSA. Uh, all right, we get Gezrus. Uh, Rebuke is okay here, but I don't love it. I know he's got shields, so um, he's already used this. It does sit here and doesn't really do much of anything though. Uh, looks like he boosted something in deck already. 
everything else I don't care about, we're going to be cycling back this Fryhe Dragoon. So we're just going to act like we're thinking and then take the pass. Gezrus is a phenomenal way of popping shields, though. Uh, okay, so I really like this. this. is a decent play with Pavetta cycling all those back. I'm guessing for a uh, Erland play. Everything on ranged. Well, so Gezrus... Uh, when you move to range, boost a random allied unit on this row by one. But drone three is instead of random unit, affect all other units in a row. So, oh, oh, you mean put all of my stuff in ranged? Yeah, I think we're gonna want that with uh, sentries. I think the other grab is sentry here too. So let's see if we can get lucky here. Do. Our grab is just gonna be Cat Witcher. I think I'm actually just gonna grab that right now. Just start pinging these shields. Also gives me an automatic moving unit. Uh, if he has any removal, he's probably gonna spend it now. We also force him to play everything to melee, which works well. Do you want this hawker smuggler down at some point? He is only one point per turn though, and uh, Dryad Matrons are two points per turn. So, since she's already boosted to seven, and she's gonna get boosted as soon as I play her. That works great for me. It'd be cool if there was a way to like pull all these Griffin Witcher Adepts out of your deck. I really like Keldar. He's one of the better Witchers from this expansion so far. She'll move first, and then this one will move. So that's why I put her all the way to the left. And we're going down to Adrenaline 3, so Gezrus makes a lot of sense here. And since he popped that one, I'm actually going to play him to range so that he plays. He goes to melee and strips these shields. Now we can just set it and forget it. I will drop down this other both on a sentry, then smuggler. It's a smart choice to continue to, to convert these so you get the shields back. And you just get these back with damn sorceress. I like the play. For <laughs> AC point value. Uh, dude, an Igni right now would just be totally legit. I would be like, I would just give my respects. <laughs> Tip of the hat. Tip of the hat, my friend. Tip of the hat. Um, yeah, I didn't. Just pure respect. We still get the point value out of Gezrus. It sucks to lose these matrons, but we'll be okay. He'll move back before, she, and then she'll go. So they'll both still move. Griffin Witcher Adept as your finisher doesn't make a lot of sense, though. Uh, definitely Damned Sorceress is the point value for us. And 
that's the W. Anyway, hope you guys really like this uh, Scoia Tell deck. Uh, I'll be doing a supplemental video today, so we're not going to do as many games. Just know that this has been probably the most winningest deck I've played with so far this season. It's pretty easy to use. So much of the stuff is just set it and forget it. Uh, you do need to make some thoughtful plays about putting all your own stuff on range so that Gezrus boosts it and forcing your opponent's stuff to melee so that he damages all of it. Uh, but as long as you're doing that, you're going to be okay. Uh, anyway, hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, if you have comments, please post those down below. Please subscribe for more content. I'm doing a video every day. And until next time, good luck on the path. Get out there. Keep on quitting. Bye.